Turn your ear, O Lord, and answer me. Save the servant who trusts in you, my God. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all day long. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're very welcome to Mass today on the 21st Sunday of Ordinary Time. Coming together as God's family with confidence that has asked the Father's forgiveness, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. You were sent to heal the contrite of God. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he put this question to his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say he's John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But you, he said, who do you say I am? Then Simon Peter spoke up. You are the Christ, he said, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Simon, son of Jonah, you are a happy man, because it was not flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. So I now say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. Then he gave the disciples strict orders not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. We know that all the apostles are mentioned in the sacred scriptures 
but only Peter is singled out by Jesus for a specialised role. He is, without doubt, the most iconic figure of the early church. Now in the Gospel today we just heard that Jesus made Peter head of the church. He and his successors were to be the focal point of unity and orthodoxy throughout history, preserving the church from error. The authority which Jesus conferred on Peter, despite his sins and failings, is now invested in Pope Francis. The reformers of the 16th century suppressed the role of the successor of St. Peter, but despite this, throughout history, he has stood head and shoulders over any other religious leader. When Pope Francis, for instance, went to Brazil for the World Youth Day a few years ago, a million, yes, a million young people were present on Copacabana Beach at his mass. Now, doesn't that speak for itself? When Peter first set foot in Rome, that be about 43 AD, it was the centre of the earth. All roads lead to Rome, they used to say. Rome, where the Pope lives, is the centre of the Catholic world. I don't know whether you voted for Brexit or not, but all I do know is that the EU has never acknowledged the great contribution the Catholic Church and Papacy has made to European culture. We can't airbrush the Church's contribution to European civilization out of history. Now we know there were some dodgy popes throughout the Church's 2,000 year history, but the saintly ones far outnumber those. The Pope may be infallible, but he is never claimed to be impeccable, as Peter, the first Pope, knew only too well. Saint Peter never tried to hide his human failures or struggles. If you remember on one occasion, he asked Jesus to leave him because he was a sinful man. And then, you remember, he went out and he wept bitterly after disowning Jesus in the early hours of Good Friday morning. Now, after the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, it dawned on Peter that it was the grace of God and not his own strength which saw him through all these difficulties and struggles. But before that, he struggled quite a bit with these problems when, for instance, he refused point blank to let Jesus wash his feet at the Last Supper. Or when, after fishing hard all night and catching nothing, he felt embarrassed and humbled in front of Jesus and the other apostles. A word from Jesus, however, changed all this when Peter's boat was filled to sinking point. Peter was on a learning curve as to the identity of Jesus. Peter had to give up the idea of doing everything his way and let God take over. Perhaps there's a lesson for all of us here. Peter's love for Jesus was the stimulus for his future mission, which would culminate in laying down his life for him. It was only after Peter declared his love for Jesus that he received his special commission to lead his church and hand on the keys of his office to his successor. If Jesus didn't think the Petrine ministry was important, he wouldn't have created it. A church without Peter is like a school without a head, or a football match without the referee. Today, 
we need Peter more than ever to keep us firmly anchored in the truth. Without the papacy, the church would be severed from its roots and no longer command the respect of all people of goodwill. face our needs before the Father. We pray for the Pope as the successor of St. Peter. May his faith never waver. When faced with difficult pastoral situations in the worldwide Catholic Church, may he be given new insight by the Holy Spirit on how to deal with them. Lord, hear us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory in his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your Church, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for your soul of the world, that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer, to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the heights, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring heart to the fullness of charity, together with that of our Pope and Ralph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, says the Lord, and I will raise him up on the last day.
Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is empty, go in peace.